This is Back to Degrassi episode 23. I'm your host, Tim McDonald, and this is a different kind of episode. This one, I'm doing an interview with Brian Donnelly, who does the Degrassi Panthers website and DGH Panthers Tumblr, and he finds the locations that Classic Degrassi was shot at just using you know, Google Maps, his memory, and just hunting them down. He finds those locations and shows them today. It's a pretty cool project, kind of kind of in line with what I'm doing here, going back to Degrassi, and I thought he'd be a great guest to have on. He also did a top 10 Degrassi episodes list, and we kind of went over that for a good portion of this episode, too, and talked lots of Degrassi stuff. It was a great conversation, and it was awesome. So I just want to say a couple of things. Uh, Thanks, everybody, for your support. With the blog TO, search for the 10 favorite Toronto podcasts that we were shortlisted on. So, you know, hopefully all those votes uh, paid off. It was great to hear from people that they were, uh, you know, supporting me and supporting the podcast. Uh, You can always do a review of the podcast on iTunes. Five is the number of stars that you should give. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at Back to Degrassi. You can follow me on Twitter at Tim FM McDonald. I have a cool show on Monday at the Comedy Cabaret. Um, that's at the Charlotte Room. It's a monthly show, last Monday of every month, and I'm doing it this month. It's a really great show. Some great comedians on there. It's free. It's a good time. Come on there. Doors at 8 o'clock. Should start shortly afterwards. Uh, oh, yeah, and also uh, I'm part of a show called The Game, which uh, every week there's stand-ups who come up, and they don't have a planned set like normally, like a normal stand-up show. The audience members put suggestions in a bucket, then the comics pull out those suggestions on stage, see it for the first time, and immediately have to try to make jokes on that topic. It's a really good show. Uh, it's just started out. That's Mondays at 10 o'clock at the Comedy Bar in Toronto. It's $5. Last week was great. There's a ton of people out there. We had a fun time. So, uh, yeah, you can come out to that this Monday and every Monday. I think that's pretty much all I have got to say. So, all right. I think that's it. We're going to go back to Degrassi. I'm very happy to have here today someone who's, you know, pretty into the history of Degrassi. He does the Degrassi Panthers website where he finds the locations that the classic show was shot at. Brian Donnelly, good to have you here. It is great to be here. Thank you for having me, Tim. Well, what do you do? What do you do outside of uh, what is your day job or My the, day job? Yes, I am. A visual artist. That's what I. That's what I. I thought. <laughs> this, is the, this is the rumor on the street, anyway. Which, just from talking to you about about the locations of Degrassi and Kensington Market and recognizing those spaces, do you think it must have to do with your visual eye as well when uh, taking those things in? I think that that's part of it. I mean, I come from like, I think genetically, I come from details. Like, my mother is a hairdresser, and. She's very good at what she does, and she's been doing it since. It's just what she went to school for. She went to hairdressing college, you know, and, and she knows everything about those details. So she's into details, and then my dad, uh, he was uh, he went to school for cartography, so map making and, and the study of maps. And <laughs> <laughs> but he's also he, he was also a very extremely detail oriented man. I mean, he was into model trains. Uh, was his hobby was was making mm-hmm. model trains to a ridiculous degree of specificity where uh, he was doing trains from the west coast of Canada 
logging in the the turn of the last century. Mm -hmm. So extremely specific, the kind of stuff that they don't have kits for. You just have to like build things on your own. And that's what he did. And he's building them in like, you know, one to a hundredth scale or I have no idea. Oh my God. When you're, you're dealing with it. Yeah. (laughs) So his, his eye for detail is something that I think I inherited from, from both of my parents. Actually, I think I, I inherited that kind of understanding of, of detail and accuracy. Uh, from both my parents so (laughs) i just ended up in the arts (laughs) (laughs) when did you start watching degrassi oh man um i probably first came across it before i actually went to junior high uh, because i did go to a junior high school uh, in st Catharines. i went to dalewood junior high school Mm -hmm. um so was this when the show was originally airing? Yeah, this yeah. would have been... When did I go to junior high? Probably about 1992? Okay. Yeah. 91 or 92, mm-hmm. I would have started junior high. And the show starts in 87. That's right. So so I would have been, you know, exposed to it around, you know, fourth or fifth grade, kind of on and off. Yeah. Like, you'd see it on TV, but you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't pay a huge amount of attention to certain things. But eventually it kind of gets in there it, yeah it, it penetrates your brain a little bit so it, it kind of gave me i remember having this like thought in my head of of how troubling it was for me to be changing schools <laughs> because uh, i was going to an elementary school in the north end of st Catharines, and then the the junior high school kind of amalgamated everybody who graduated grade six from all of the elementary school <laughs> <laughs> brought them to one place yeah. and it was like this is going to be an all day fist fight every day. <laughs> I was terrified. And it was because I had kind of accumulated information from Degrassi Junior High. Probably yeah. season two and probably Dwayne is still like haunting my dreams. Isn't it I, I kind of I hadn't realized that Dwayne was in those that earlier episode until I rewatched it recently, actually. I totally forgot that he was you know, made that appearance before high school. Yeah, he's there. I mean, he has that fight with Joey in mm-hmm. season two, we and just, that's kind of his big. We just of, watched that one on the uh, the just, podcast. Just yeah, got that, was, that one done. Yeah, that's a great episode. It really it is. It's, it's a tremendous episode. The funny thing when we were talking about like what the lesson is in that episode, it's just like sometimes you got to fight. Sometimes you got to take sometimes your beating. You just have to show up. <laughs> yeah, <and> take a <laughs> licking. It's such a it's such a funny Canadian message though. It's just like you know you gotta if you're a jerk and you're running well, your mouth. I think that was kind of the the other end of the the show though was was that it was extremely realistic. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like I've ever gained any sort of you know moral mm-hmm. <laughs> moral you know fortune from from being in a fist fight. I I think that every single fight I've ever been in, I've walked away from going. Well, I mean that was. That was ridiculous. Yeah. I like, you either lost or you won is pretty much how, there's very few draws in fist fighting. No. And I mean, even if you win, I mean, what have you got? A broken (laughs) hand? Like, still, it's, it sucks, even if you win. So every fist fight is kind of BS. Maybe that was the lesson. I guess so. And they've just hidden it under the fact that they (laughs) kept going. Like, let's ride this fist fight all the way to the end. But it it didn't, yeah, I gotta say, it didn't really say that either. Because then it was like, because then the kid's scooter didn't like the bully he liked joey yeah scooter was a weird right he stops stops. he calls him a bully that guy's like a lawyer now or something oh really i believe it he he skipped a grade i buy it yeah totally (laughs) i think i can't remember where he works i think he works for the hive or something i i I can't remember i did outside of like when i first started um, putting my project online i started thinking to myself about as we were saying before, the accessibility of Canadian celebrities. And I mm-hmm. thought, I wonder how many of them are just on Facebook. Mm-hmm. How many you can just look up by name. And it turns out it's a lot of them. It's <laughs> it's the majority. of them. Some of them, too, are like maxed out with friends, I've noticed. I think like uh, yeah. Amanda Parrott. Steptoe, I remember one dad, too, recently she was maxed. Amanda Steptoe, yeah, she called me out on Facebook like the other day. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I friended her a little while ago, but I got called out... Um, because of that list I did with Blog to Yo. But yeah, you oh, can... Oh, you know, we're going to go over that <laughs> list by detail. Yeah. We're going to talk a couple of them. I'm sure I'm going to hear an earful for it. I've been hearing a bit about oh. other people's opinions. I mean, that's... Anytime you do a top ten list like this... Oh, yeah. You're going to you're gonna run the you're gamut starting, of opinions. You're starting a fight. It's tough. <laughs> I think you hit most, most of the major ones. But let, let me ask about... 
why don't you describe your site just for as, as best you can for anyone who maybe hasn't and come across it? My site is like a, a detail oriented, um, I don't know, need to prove myself right about everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's I'm, I'm traveling around Toronto by bicycle and reshooting sequences from Degrassi Junior High, the first three seasons of the Degrassi school empire i won't count kids of degrassi street because that's kind of a weird beginning that i'm not actually really familiar with um, which a lot of people find shocking but same with me know. same with me actually i keep people tell me i should do do the kids of degrassi it's, it's a, like there's there's almost no availability <laughs> on that show it's not on youtube there were three episodes on youtube at one point um, and it's it's impossible to find it on DVD. My girlfriend actually does have the DVD set of it. There's always somebody. There's always some like unicorn hiding <laughs> with a set of DVDs for that movie or that that TV show. Um, so I kind of got started. I, I rewatched the series. Um, I was working on a solo show of paintings for Australia a few years ago, and so I was kind of holding myself up in my house for days at a time and I had a weekend to myself and I had been given the box set of Degrassi Junior High a few years earlier and uh, I said well what the hell let's let's hold myself up paint and watch all of Degrassi Junior High in, in one weekend so I bought like a case of beer and I watched the whole show by myself over the course of three days, which is a terrible idea. <laughs> Don't actually do that. Like, I mean, especially if you're alone. <laughs> really don't do it. It's it's a lot to take. Those kids go through so much. <laughs> so so I mean, much. I mean, wheels alone, you're talking about some, oh, some very serious issues. There's <laughs> a tremendous amount of issues from wheels. And, I mean, when I describe the show, too, that's one of the things I always say because it's, it's like, Cheesy, 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 terrible, realistic, dark things. It's yep. almost like they balance each other well, out. Will's story is, is like partly true, right? Like his parents die at the, what is that, the beginning of season three? Yes. Um, and then that actually happened. Uh, the character, um, like Wheels, uh, Neil Hope, Neil Hope, who played Wheels, his, I believe his father died, like, during the 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 spring before they started shooting that season and I, I guess i've heard this all kind of like secondhand kind mm -hmm. of information or watched you know loose interviews but as i understand it that actually happened his that his almost... father died right before they shot this whole idea of him losing his parents did they sh from the story you heard did they shoot it because of what happened or did, was it just oddly i think it was just kind of already written oh. um but they may have written it around the fact that it did happen yeah and i, I couldn't say um for sure mm -hmm. i mean i don't know too too much about the the background mm -hmm. of how each each episode came to be I, I really just my whole thing is is watching episodes and and being able to pinpoint spots in toronto because i mean i've lived here for for over a decade now and I've, i worked as a courier for a while mm -hmm. and i've just you know been around i walk a lot in the city well, so it seems like you have you really get to know a lot of kind of angles of the city and i've lived all over it too. yeah I've, I've lived in every corner in the, in the last 10 years just when you're reading your site sometimes you'll talk about the locations and how they kind of like stick with you and they'll just yeah. kind of come to you at some point you'll yeah. think of a new i think it was the tv uh station that they shot uh oh like, itv like, yeah that, like finding that one <laughs> that was like a super weird location that i just knew about from being a courier because it's close to um what is it called like down on uh, eastern avenue there's a whole film toronto film studios are there and uh, i'd been there i i've been delivering stuff for for um this advertising kind of agency they, they do a lot of work with with movie companies and stuff so you move a lot of stuff back and forth so i was in and out of there a few times so when i saw the building from the outside i kind of recognized the shape and i mean a lot of my thing is i'll, I'll look at the shapes of buildings and then i'll go to google maps mm -hmm. and just look at everything uh from above so the the bird's eye satellite view is a great way to kind of 
get down shapes of buildings and go, okay, okay. And I mean, my site gets weirder and weirder because I'm, I'm looking for insane details. Mm -hmm. Like which way are the shadows falling? Because that'll tell me where the sun is. It'll tell me like, you know, I can figure out what time of day it is. Technically you Uh can figure these things out by watching the show. Unless it's cloudy, which (laughs) huge pain in the ass. But, um, but that was the whole thing was, was, finding things by knowing a little bit about the city and then just kind of being um, reductive, really. I just kind of look at things and go, no, it's not here. It can't be here. can't be here. can't be here. And you just, you know, by, by process of elim- elimination, you just find things. Mm-hmm. And I mean, some of them are, are impossible finds that I, even now I found them and I've published them, but I still am not sure how I figured it out really give me an example of one of those spikes apartment okay it's crazy uh-huh. that i even found it there's it, almost no information to go off of in the show is it supposed to be above the salon that her mom no, works at no she lives in a downstairs entry apartment with these strange um uh they're, they're white tube steel uh fencing around the doorway and she walks down some concrete steps to get into it. And it's all painted white, and it very clearly says, like, 6D on the apartment or on the door or something. Very strange, like, green door with white lettering. It almost looks like a um, like a, a brand-new plaza in 1989. <laughs> <laughs> so now it just looks out of date. But <laughs> to find it is impossible because you're given almost no information because the shot begins with her. This is just after she leaves um, the shopper's drug mart with her pregnancy mm-hmm. test. So the shot is her coming around a corner and walking towards the camera. She cuts across a driveway and then she's at her steps that lead down into her, her, her apartment. There's almost nothing to look at in this shot. Plus uh, it's being shot in um I'll say late fall. There's no snow on the ground. There's not a lot of leaves on the trees. It's extremely late fall. So it's dark (laughs) when they're (laughs) shooting this because we're doing after school, so it can't be daylight. (laughs) So (laughs) it's very dark. So it's really hard to see anything. And I had to base all of my searching off of the one piece of information that, that showed up in the background which was a very large set of steps. That was it. And you found that set of steps. Yeah. That was like the basis of my search <laughs> went around the set of steps. I thought I'm never going to find this apartment building with these, these white tube steel fences <laughs> because that's crazy. I, I can't search for that from above. <laughs> so there's no way to see that kind of detail. You'd have to do a street by street, street view, search. Yeah. And I mean, this is such a weird looking building that looks like it's, you know, 1989 new is what it looked like. So I thought, I'm never going to find that. Like, I don't know what changed and when in this city. You can spot a lot of things like the way certain houses look. There's a certain look to a Toronto house, right? Mm -hmm. But very like narrow, skinny, um, what do they call it? Victorian? Yeah. I guess it's like post Victorian <laughs> Toronto. Um, I'll take, your, all, I'll take your word on that one. Like, <laughs> they all kind of look that way. And so <laughs> to chase down this seemed impossible. So I thought I'll, I'll look for this giant set of steps. So then I had to think about things like what has a giant set of steps. And I mean, that boiled down to a few things like there's, there's a couple of options, but what stuck out for me was it's got to be a church churches are always into this like that's you know true. walking yeah. up towards god and and all of this you know grandiose hugeness of of <laughs> religion i thought this is a church thing for sure so i um i i, I plugged that into to my google maps i just wrote church <laughs> and and it'll pop up like hundreds of markers all over the city and you but think, then you were kind of targeting into this you must have been targeting in on the kind of a leslieville area it's funny you can't target the leslieville area when mm. you're looking for something on this show really you yeah. can but uh-huh. you won't find as much as you're thinking yeah so it was more spread out where they needed it's actually to shoot. closer to where we're sitting right now <laughs> <laughs> they were more midtown eh yeah it's um her house turned out to be it turned out to be this uh, i think it's a ukrainian church 
on um, close to Baldwin and McCall. I think oh. it's on Darcy Street. I think it's on Darcy Street. Oh, okay. And Actually, that... purely luck that I just saw a church, and it was at kind of a, a T junction in the road, which is what it looked like she was walking at. Mm-hmm. And I thought, okay, well, that's a T junction. It's right at the end of a T junction. Let's just drop into Street View and see what I see. And I could see this church, and I'm looking at these steps, and I'm going, these steps look great. So I turned my view, and I just went, holy shit. And it was it? There it is. Oh. Like, there's the building. So then I just like went by the building and changed the street view and looked back and said, that's it. That's got to be 6D. And I rode my bike over there. They also doubled it up. They use it again in season three, and they call it Arthur's dad's apartment. Oh, really? Um, they changed the the number on the door, but I'm pretty That's certain. That's clever. That of them. I can't believe they that. went that far. <laughs> I, I think they only changed the letter though. They didn't change it. It was like six B. <laughs> but if you go to that building, all the D's are are the basement apartments, and the B's are are the 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 first floor entries. So it, I don't know why they changed it. So when you're doing when you're doing them, are you going episode by episode? I'm. Or is it posting it episode in by ep- in, uh, in order? Uh-huh. That's um, what I mean. So when you do, you not even worry about episode you know fourteen until you're the, whatever whatever the case may be nine until you finish date or are you kind of going through all of them and well the pegging thing is away? that I'm 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 going through and I'm I'm taking my DVDs and I'm screen capping uh, enough information for mm-hmm. me to kind of go with my phone. All my all my shots are on my phone, mm-hmm. <laughs> so I can use my phone to look at the still. And go, okay, this is what it is. And then I try and line it up and get it looking right. And I take, you know, a shot for today with my camera. Mm-hmm. And then um, it, it's re- it really boils down to how far ahead I am in uh, screen capping and, mm-hmm. and doing these stills and, and putting them into my phone. Um, because a lot of them are close together. Some of them are, are very close. So it doesn't make sense to ride my bike out somewhere that's insanely far away and only shoot one of the three things that need to be there. Mm-hmm. So when I first got the project rolling, I actually did a few shots from season two uh, because I was as far out as I was. Yeah. I was like, I'm, I'm out here. I may as well shoot this and get it done. And, uh, but I had to leave stuff like, um, what's it called? Arnold's drive-in from, it's later in season two. Uh-huh. That's uh, during the Joyride episode when, trust me, the episode's called Trust Me. Yeah, that one's coming out. Joey and Wheels sleep over at, at uh, Snake's house, and it, it's a total disaster. Mm-hmm. They go to a place and get uh, fries or something in Snake's parents' car, and it's ridiculously far out. It's the furthest west the show goes in the <laughs> city. It goes out to Long Branch. It's crazy. Oh, okay, yeah. It's a long way to ride a bike on a summer day. <laughs> let's, let's put it there. I mean, it's just a long way to go. The school itself was out in Etobicoke, right? Yeah. If I remember it's correctly. Clo- it's actually not very far from mm-hmm. where Arnold's drive-in was. It's actually 68 Daisy Avenue. <laughs> Daisy Avenue? Daisy Street? Daisy. 68 Daisy. I've been inside. Mm-hmm. I actually got inside the school. When when did you start doing the site or start working? When did you start looking? Man, going, uh, years long? ago. I When I watched the series that one time when I was alone, I kind of recognized a few things. Mm-hmm. And, and that was, geez, I don't even know how long the site's been up now. <laughs> <laughs> Two years. Okay. Two years, almost three years. So then, that means I probably watched it. The year before that, so maybe three or four years ago, um, was when I started seeing things in the show and going, I know where that is, and then thinking, oh, I know where that is, I know where that is. So I started marking them on a map because I thought it was funny. So I started marking them on a Google map that I'd saved and was like, oh, there's there's that. Mm -hmm. And then it became a challenge of like, how, well, let's, that's got to be right. That's got to be right. And then I started writing notes about why I was right. Because there's another, there's a website out there that was published in the early days of publishing websites, uh, Degrassi.ca, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, Degrassi.ca was a fan site, and he doesn't live in Toronto, the person who wrote it. I'm I'm assuming it's a man, I can't remember. Um, But he came and visited and took some photos of things that he knew that were on the show, and also posted, you know, where things were. And a lot of it he got right. And I've 
used a lot of information from his site because I remember looking it up. There was also a thing that came out in I Magazine once. Remember I Magazine? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> might not have been I. It might have been the Grid. But it was like um, they're both gone. <laughs> um, it it was. Um, they they posted the top 10 Degrassi hangouts is what they called it. And one of them was glaringly wrong and it drives me crazy because every because t- it pops up on Twitter every once uh, in a while, right? Yeah. So it would be like, "Oh, top 10 Degrassi hangouts." And every time I'm always like, "Number 10 is wrong. It's really wrong. <laughs> Somebody's not looking at the details of this. It's really wrong." So, um that's what I say when I say that I'm trying to prove myself right. <laughs> it's it's me, you know, <laughs> writing down all the reasons that I am right and everything, every angle of this that I've looked at to prove that this is actually the spot. Um, so that's what it, that's what it really boils down to are these small details for me. And that's how the site kind of got going was like when I started putting all this information in, you know, a friend of mine was like, if you actually make this into a site, you realize somebody's going to come after you because somebody always thinks you're wrong. <laughs> so you're going to have to back this up with some serious facts. Well, it's I pretty. Thought, unde- yeah. I mean, and it's pretty undeniable when you see them, right? Like the even for the most part, even when they're updated, you can still see kind of the original. Yeah, you spot. can still see the the spot. It's funny how many people you run into. Like when you start talking about that show, everyone tells you something. Everyone who's from this city, anyway, they always tell you, especially oh, but, in this uh, age bracket. Yeah, there's right? an age. Like, there's an age cutoff for just, sure. Like if you're under, you know. <laughs> Under twenty, you probably won't talk about. It. If you're under thirty, you probably won't talk about it. There was a. I had right. one one guest who she was twenty two or twenty three, and she had watched the show actually pretty recently on DVD. So that was that was kind of the youngest guest that who was who had pre watched. I like to introduce <laughs> new people as well. That's kind of an interesting game <laughs> <laughs> to watch people walk into. I noticed that that's a big thing on Twitter is is people watching it for the first time. Mm-hmm. People who are very used to like they started watching. The Next Generation, a show that I've never seen. Mm-hmm. I've never watched any of those. I, you, no, that's not true. I watched the very first episode because I was curious, and I thought, yeah, it's not the same thing. It's not. You know what's interesting though? They do continue some of the storylines oh, yeah. from Degrassi. Did you I've heard that? You know what you should check out? Neil Hope's appearance on the on the Next Generation. I did actually go looking for it at one point because I heard that they talked him into coming back. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, like, disappeared after the show. And yeah. And he, he took off. That was it for him. He no longer wanted to be a celebrity. He no longer wanted to be known as Wheels. And, I mean, I can imagine that that's a little bit spooky mm-hmm. to be called Wheels for the rest of your life when you're trying to just live your life. Like, And that's what he's trying to do. And so. even, even Nicole Stoffman, when I talked to her, she didn't like the association with their show either it took her a long time she's to come starting to him she's embracing it right now yeah that, that's I exactly what i talked to her she, about she posted a couple of things on facebook a little while ago that were that were very funny mm-hmm. where she's like uh oh, look at this article that somebody wrote about uh, what was it it was like styles that were on sex in the city <laughs> and how she wore them first i thought that was brilliant yeah that was a really cool tie and i saw her post that <clears> one as well um, so you're gonna just gonna go through the junior high you were saying I'm... I, I might do degrassi high i definitely started the map um, with the information on it, but I, I've found that, um, so there's a change for me and you can see it pretty dramatically actually in the beginning of season three with things start to change for the show. You can tell that it's ramped up in popularity. They've now won like an Emmy. They're mm-hmm. pretty well known at this point and things start to shift. They start doing product placement on oh. the show, like clear tech and, uh, <laughs> Clear tech was the, the. I don't know if that comes up in season three, but but it starts to change. The writing starts to change, not not hugely, but <clears throat> it's it's a it's a different kind of show. Um, and then when you get to high school, it, it, product positioning actually sneaks in there like a few times. Where <laughs> there's like Quaker Quaker granola bars and stuff. People are very consciously pulling them out of their lockers so you can see the box, and. It, it kind of takes away from it. Also, I there, there was a lot of talk on the internet that the show in its infancy was filmed at friends' houses. And and that's how they got away with, with so many locations. Because the unique thing about a show like Degrassi Junior High is that it's filmed all over this city 
in the middle of the day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, this is Toronto in the 80s, so it's a different kind of place. It's a sleepier town at that point. It's not like now. Well, they um, were shooting it in the summers, though, too, I think, right? Like, I think they were shooting it kind of across the board. Like, mm. You'll notice that some of those episodes, they're wearing winter coats, and they're saying that it's... Yeah, there's like you know, never really snow fall. out, though, no, I don't think, in any no. scenes. Because that's, that's why I thought it was mostly shot in the summer or spring or something. Just when they were kids would be in school, and there's just never snow, even when they were wearing coats. I'm like, right. they're just trying to make it seem cold. Right. Um, well, that's that's where the show kind of runs away for me. And so when you get to Degrassi High and you do research like I do, you realize that they aren't using as many shoot locations. Mm. It kind of seems to cut down because the number of houses that they used in Degrassi Junior High for, you know, um, student characters lives like Melanie has a house that she goes to. Arthur has a house that he goes to. And, Lucy. And Lucy has a house. Vula even. A couple of scenes at her house. There were scenes at Vula's house. I don't have Vula's house actually published because those are all interior mm-hmm, shots. Mm-hmm. Almost impossible. Uh, yeah. Like, you'd have to be looking out windows and go, okay, what's you, outside the window? You, oh my God. <laughs> it's, it's impossible. You'd be hanging on it for so long. What is outside you have window? to give up certain things. Like I don't have Yik's house either and that shows up in season one. Yeah, that's um, like the, the you only really see it from the back door, the back that, door that Arthur the goes to to yeah. get the, the. I had a I had like a give theory the about where it was, uh-huh. but it, I proved myself wrong, and I thought there's no way I'm gonna find this because they shot it at night, they shot it from the back of the house, mm-hmm. and you can't see the street from the angle that they shoot it at. And I thought there's no information, <laughs> there's nothing I can use that can prove where this is, but that stopped in uh, in season one of Degrassi High. Um, I'll, I'll spoil this for you now. They really only used one or two houses over mm. and over again. They would redress them and shoot them from different angles. And I watched it for so long, and I thought, this is depressing and boring <laughs> that they only used. It seems like for they, your purposes. It seems like they bought a house and they just <laughs> used it. I mean, a lot of the houses are in Leslieville. I will mm-hmm. say that. A yeah. lot of the stuff is in Leslieville that they used to shoot in. Because I believe that... Um, uh, Linda Schuyler owned a lot of properties. She's, you know, the big cheese over at the over at Playing with Time, um, and the Playing with Time office um, was actually located in the area too. Their their head office was, uh, what is it now? It's right next to a gas station <laughs> called Leslieville Pumps that actually makes great sandwiches. I will at the say gas that. station? Yeah, <laughs> strange. I'm pretty sure the gas station is just like. A secondary idea to how good these sandwiches are. <laughs> I had their their beef brisket and it's magic. But right next to it, there's this weird little building with this rounded like front room, and it really doesn't look like it belongs there on the street. But uh, but that's where their head office used to be. That was playing with time. <laughs> head offices. I think it was a hostel at one point. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff in Leslieville housewise. There's but they shot all over the city. <laughs> but in Degrassi High, that's not really the case. And they shot a lot of stuff in nondescript areas. Yeah. So it, it's really difficult to kind of pinpoint all that stuff. And it's not very interesting for a reader to be like, oh, we're back at this house again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I guess, yeah, maybe you can just do kind of an addendum. Whatever you do. Something. Yeah, I mean, oh, this is also this person says, this person says, this person says. this. Like, it's too many people's yeah. houses. And there is, it's pretty much just school or people. You, I guess the diner that Michelle works at serving. Oh, uh, the donut shop? The donut shop. Still yeah. there. Still there. So you know some of them. The other thing I wanted to get into talking about with you is that top 10 list of episodes, yeah. <laughs> which you said you did get some heat. We you... got a little flack for that um, <laughs> because nobody ever agrees with the top 10 list. And it was, um, <clears throat> it, it was an invitation from, um, from, from Retro Ontario. Mm-hmm. Um, Who's, who runs an amazing YouTube channel. I can't remember his first name right now. I'm not good at this. Remembering things on the fly business. Don't, we can, I can, um, I can plug it at the beginning if you, if you send it to me. So don't, or if it comes to you. when it's it, Mike. So, <laughs> so this is one thing too that kind of wasn't clear from the list that I noticed. You didn't do it in an order of 10 to 1, did you? Or 1 to 10? No, I didn't really do this in a, um, a list of most important things mm-hmm. like it, it didn't go from most important to least important 
uh, and I was also pressed to do this as a list that was that included Degrassi Junior High and Degrassi High. Which is, I mean, we're talking about five seasons of television. Yeah. So, so we're talking about you know maybe sixty-five episodes. Mm-hmm. That's a lot to choose from, and there's a ton of stuff that happens on this show that is bigger than you expect it to be. You know what? And I think you did a pretty great job because there was only five. I've got okay. Well, let's go through the episodes first off. <laughs> so I get called out it, for each one. We'll just talk about them. The first one was Bye Bye Junior High, The Fire. Why did you? Why do you think this one was? They was burned it? down the in school, school. <laughs> <laughs> as a piece of writing for television. That's hilarious mm-hmm. because they were running into a problem for the show. I mean, they needed a piece of like finality, and the way television worked at that point, you couldn't have really expanded it. The, the way we do TV now is totally different from the way we did it. In, in 1989 or 90 or I can't remember what year. I think it was 90 they burned down the school. Yes. <laughs> so, 87, 88. So that season was in 89. Yeah. 89, yeah. Um, so so that was their way of, of keeping this group of people together because they needed them to be on the same sets. And I mean, Degrassi is still a brown, groundbreaking piece of television. Um, in that there are main characters on that show, but you're, you're never always following them which is kind of like the problematic nature of the sitcom right is that you're always following this group of you know four or five people it makes it see it makes it seem more realistic because that's the way life is like people people are living lives outside of the you know whoever it's just it's interesting how it shifts them in well it's interesting to see a little i mean a character like joey you automatically assume that joey is like the alpha character on that show um, but there's episodes where he's just walking by in the background mm-hmm, and they don't say anything to him mm-hmm. <laughs> or he says like two words, maybe give somebody a high five and that's it. Just walks by. And that's great because that's the way life really is. Like he, he wouldn't be there. Whereas like you get a show like Saved by the Bell and Ex- I mean, you got to exactly follow the... Zach Morris around <laughs> everywhere. I don't care, man. Yeah. They're just, it, uh, that's always the, the ingenious part of it. But some characters, too, never really have their day. You kind of feel bad for them. It's like, oh, you're always a background. Yeah, I, I do kind of always feel bad for, for certain people. <laughs> that there girl, are always characters. The one girl who has, like, red hair in junior high, and then she has a mohawk in high school. I was just like, what is her story? She's, she's always a background. Man. She has a red hair. I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's, like, several characters who backgrounded that show and who had lots of some of them actually had great dialogue yeah and some of them had no dialogue oh alex yanku like never a few sort of stories on him but like he's mostly a background yeah alex is is only there a little bit they don't give him too too much which is like um um oh what was i gonna say there sorry i no, lost okay. my train of thought i got right into it and <laughs> fell right off so I think so I think I, I see where you're coming from with the fire, but that or that that episode that maybe would have been one that people would have been thinking eh, I don't know about that. Episode. It's such a strange way to tie it together though, because they needed them all in the same place mm-hmm. when high school came around. So they burned down Degrassi High. I mean, it's like the same way that they wrote um, the what was it the beginning of of season three. Oh yeah, that the end been... of season two, where where the high schools are too crowded, yeah. So we can't have like half of our like our base <laughs> leave the show because this is Degrassi Junior High, and we've started following people who are in a split of years, right? So you're gonna have a split. We can't have Snake and and Wheels go to high school and have Joey not go to high school because what are we gonna talk about? What yeah. happens to the Zit Remedy for God's sake? That's our money right there. <laughs> this is how we sell this show. Um, so that's so, a good point. They had to make a decision. Yeah, and they made this decision at the end of, of season three as well, which was to burn down the high school, <laughs> so you, or burn down the junior high school, and have everybody move to Degrassi High all at once um, mm-hmm. a couple of years later, which I think is an interesting piece of writing and very funny. I don't think it's necessarily good writing. I think that it's just very, very funny. I would agree. Burn it down. <laughs> you know what, guys? There's only one thing to do. Burn it down. Let's burn this. Thing. Let's cut our losses and just burn this fucker down. The Sorry, next, I got a foul mouth. That's okay. Internet. Don't worry. That's fine. <laughs> um, the next episode that I really, I agree with you. This is definitely a top ten episode to me. The Great Race. This is such a memorable episode. God, I love that episode. It's got the classic line too, like that you would be you repeated. Everyone would laugh at you. 
Melanie, you're so flat, the walls are jealous. I'm pretty sure that I heard that, actually, when I was in elementary school. <laughs> pretty sure somebody said that to somebody else. And I thought it was mean then. <laughs> <laughs> and I hadn't heard it on, on television. Uh, it, it's a great episode. It's a great episode for me because it's... There's a few locations in it, and it was one of those ones where I got to do... It was one of the very first things that I did with the site where I started really interacting with the public to do this website because I showed up at the pool, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, And that's a public pool. You can't just show up at a public pool with a camera, <laughs> which I learned by showing up to a public pool with a camera. <laughs> Sometimes you get all in the hard way, I guess. Um, so I kind of got told off, and I was like, holy shit, they think that I'm up to no good. <laughs> and I need to rectify this immediately, because this isn't the person that I am, and I don't want to be thought of as this. I don't want my face showing up like on a poster <laughs> later from security cam video. So I walk right over, and I said, look, I'm doing this website. You know, Can I talk to you know whoever's in charge about coming in and shooting some shots of the pool itself? And she said, let me, this was one of the lifeguards, and she said, let me call down, you know, my manager, whoever it was. And the manager came down, and I stayed, and like, waited, and, and she came down, and she said, oh, you can't shoot, you know, this time of day. I was like, I understand that now. I didn't really think about this before I came here. I just kind of got on my bike and rode over, which, looking back at it, <laughs> was a really bad idea, because people bring their kids here, you don't want people showing up with a camera that's super weird so we spoke for a little bit and i told her what my project was and she got really excited about it oh that's awesome i was like am i are you kidding like so she was really into it she had no idea that this was the pool oh wow they used so so to be there at uh, maddie eckler is the name of the pool maddie eckler uh i think it's community center over at uh, gerard and um just past Carla, just east of Carla. Uh, Jordan Pape, I believe, is the intersection that it sits on. Maddie Eckler Pool. Um, and we set up a date to have me come in when nobody was there but lifeguards and her. And I would shoot for 15 minutes, get everything I needed, mm -hmm. and, you know, shake some hands and get out of there. Yeah. And so that was the very first time that I ever interacted with anybody or told them about what this project was because everything I'd shot earlier was kind of, you know, a few things here and there. Mm -hmm. That was the first major interaction I'd had with anybody. And it was really great to see somebody get excited about it because, I mean, the pool had changed a little bit. I mean, they'd painted the place. They'd, you know, things it, had happened. Did it have bleachers still like it did then? Yes, the bleachers yeah. are still there. And that's what really sold it for yeah. me was as soon as I walked in, I saw those bleachers and thought, this is it. This is the pool. <laughs> this is where the great race happened. This is where Joey yells some vulgar shit at Melanie, who <laughs> and, is my favorite character. I and it's the Melanie. only time this pool is mentioned while they're at Degrassi Junior High. Yeah, then it disappears. And then it disappears. It disappears entirely. And they that, act like there's a pool at the school the entire time. <laughs> they also act like it's no big deal that there's a pool at the school. That's it's a really huge deal. deal. <laughs> <laughs> That's an incredibly big For deal. For elementary pool. school to have a pool. Oh but it just, like, fades off. Much like the way the, the cafeteria just appears in the third season, but it was never there. Never there before. Yeah, there a, a lot of eating outside <laughs> and in just, the hallways. <laughs> oh, there's a cafeteria, guys. Oh, let's show up now. Um, let's, yeah, they waited two seasons to introduce the cafeteria. So, yeah, the pool just disappears. It's really funny, though, because like they, had, they, they were implying that it was part of the school because they had the... Um, the the speakers that they did the announcements on they were always painted they had this blue uh, background with a, a yellow lightning bolt logo because it was like the degrassi news <laughs> they were like making a, a little joke on news <laughs> for kids but they had one installed in that change room that the girls were using at uh -huh. the very beginning of the episode right like you can see uh, i believe there's an announcement most things start with an announcement from mr lawrence which is like a secondary offshoot Twitter account that I want to start that it's like <laughs> tweets from Mr. Lawrence. I've tweeted a few. I've done a few <laughs> like that in mind. Yeah, oh, just God. different ones. There are just some ridiculous <laughs> ones in there. So yeah, the and then the pool just never comes back. They never talk about it ever again. Just dis weird thing about Mr. Lawrence. He has like a bunch of announcements where he's like Alex Yanku. Your glasses have been found. Or yeah. if anyone has seen Alex, will, it's like such Arthur, a running gag. Will Arthur Kobolovsky please come to my office? 
and bring your backup disc. <laughs> <laughs> it's a strange, strange thing on the announcement. What was going on? <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea what those two were up to the, in those pre-internet days. The next episode that you listed is one actually I've I've always loved. It creeps. It creeps is it stands as one of the most important like episodes I think I ever watched. Um. It's so interesting how it's it's a, a movie within a show. <laughs> One yeah, of those yeah. deals where they're doing those things it's, are always fun whenever a show a does that. Show. Yeah. I remember thinking like this is how easy it would be to make a movie. It, it doesn't take much, and I've always been like a, a DIYer. I, I do everything myself first until I fail at it miserably, <laughs> and um, <clears throat> I, I have plenty of furniture at home that I can show you that, that attests to that <laughs> whole idea. Um, but. Um, to just to just watch them make this movie with a video camera, I remember seeing it the first time. Just like you know, a shoulder-mounted VHS mm-hmm. camera. I remember thinking about that when I when I finally made it to high school, like when I got to high school and I, and I was taking a media class, and they essentially gave us those cameras. Yeah, I was already thinking about this episode and was thinking about the crazy shit that I could do with this camera, and um, yeah. That, that was it's a great episode just for that not much actually happens in that as far as locations goes they really no, only go to the school just in the school shooting yeah. it and but they're shooting it, it on the weekend they're, mm-hmm. they're doing all this weird stuff and i thought this is a great episode and it was a feminist horror film plus i was a, a huge fan of horror films i have been for a very long time i feel there's just and it, yeah it's not like much happens or anything but it, or it's a groundbreaking one it's just a lot of fun that episode yeah. actually yeah, it's, it's actually one of the most fun episodes to watch them work on a project together and it just be funny. Yeah. Like, and, you know, there's a lesson at the end for Lucy about, you know, taking it in stride because everybody's laughing. Yeah. Everybody's laughing at her movie and she was, it was very serious. It's a feminist horror film. Yeah. yeah she, but she's I calling mean, it a film, right? <laughs> <laughs> Stop calling it a film. Yeah. You're, you, um, you, you had know, fun. It, it's, a, it's a 10 minute epic at best. <laughs> <laughs> it may be a short. <laughs> um, so it's a uh, it's a great episode for that. I mean, just just for that in itself. That was the reason I liked it so much. I've never forgotten that. Like, I think it's their their opening credits on yeah. the film is like it creeps written in ketchup on the on the shower wall and they wash it off. Which <laughs> is honestly better than the graphics that Degrassi generally yeah, uses. They actually <laughs> had much better graphics doing that. I don't know who they paid to write this in ketchup on the wall. <laughs> But, like, that font is brilliant. <laughs> See, the next episode is one I don't think that I agree with. It, it comes. It's the episode Trust Me. Trust Me is one of my favorite episodes because of this... the amount of locations. Ah. Uh... Purely based on the number of locations that I had to go through just to shoot it. Because, I mean, the the, whole, the episode on the whole is ridiculous. It's... If, I mean, if, if is... Joey Jeremiah is at your house and he wants to drive your dad's car, <laughs> kick his ass out. He's just gonna get you into trouble. I mean, in that <clears throat> in that regard, that's like a pretty memorable episode, actually. Yeah. That sleepover where they yeah you know, they sure. take they do steal the car and Joey just gets them into it's it's funny how Joey gets just gets them into more and more trouble. Like classic Joey. That's kind of his way. <laughs> and, so and the B storyline with Spike getting kicked out of school. Was that the B storyline? I guess that was that the one? A story. I can't. That's what I thought I saw from it. I, you know what? I really remember a lot of the episodes based on where they go, um, location wise. I'm really bad at remembering a lot of the storylines. Um, but in in trust me, I mean we're all over the place. Finding Snake's house was a very big deal for me too, because I found it once again based on a church. <laughs> Used a church once again. There was a church across the street from Snake's parents' house. Oh, that's and interesting. That's how I found Snake's house. Was that church? There must have been some some exteriors in the streets around there where they were driving. That yeah, when they clue first, in when on they those. First, uh, when when Joey and Wheels come up to the house in the middle of the day, there's like a quick shot of the parents driving away in a taxi cab, mm-hmm. and um, they run up to the house. So you get like a few exteriors. And then you get a couple of good ones when they leave in the car, when they, when they take the car, because they wake up late and Wheels has to be at the optometrist. 
really flimsy, <laughs> really flimsy excuse for taking a Guys, car. I gotta get to the optometry. <laughs> right now. I can't miss this appointment again. My mom will kill me. Yeah, I'm excited for that episode. It's coming up in a few. I have to watch... They go all over the place. Like, it's a, if, you, if you look at it in a map perspective, uh-huh. the directions they go in make no sense. Uh-huh. I mean, if you know the city of Toronto yes. and you look at it, you go, where are you guys going? <laughs> I mean, like, they start at Snake's House, which is on uh, Hiawatha in the East End. And then they drive through all these little neighborhoods that are around... Um, Broadview, between Broadview and, and um, Carlaw, there's up up in the, just south of Bloor Street, um, they're driving around that neighborhood. They're actually driving right by the park where the fight took place in season <laughs> two. Uh, they drive right past that. And they also drive past a, another school when they, hey girls, and Joey's waving at girls and, and they miss a stop sign. They go right through it. I, I documented all of that, too. Uh-huh. Like, I walked around documenting that. And then they go to the optometrist, which is uh, over on Carlaw. Uh, Carlaw and Gerard, not far from Maddie Eckler Pool. <laughs> and, uh, and then they... For some reason, Joey talks Snake into going for fries. Inexplicably at Arnold's drive-in, which is out at Long Branch. Oh, and he's like, a it's pro- a five minute trip. Nope, it's that is forty five minutes at the <laughs> at the best. The best you could do is forty five minutes, man. They did not figure on someone mapping logistics of that. No, joyride. no one ever figured that I would do it. And by the time <laughs> I got to Arnold's Drive-in, it had been torn down and turned into a condo. So they probably mm. thought I'd never know. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the secret. But dies. they left. There was a giveaway point in the background of Arnold's Drive-in when they're when the when the a van backs into um, into snake's car and that's where the the real trouble of the episode begins right because something happened to the car yes now it's not in one piece you can there's this shot of joey standing in front of the restaurant and you can see right through the windows that are on both sides of the restaurant to this water tower and the water tower gave it away that's how i found it was the water <laughs> tower it was the only reason i knew where it was that and a uh, go transit sign which indicated like that there was a go station nearby and I thought, okay, water tower, ghost station. What's in between a water tower and a ghost station? So this water tower is on like an old munitions field out in on the edge, like mm-hmm. in Mississauga. I think and I've, then it's, I've, it's I've actually taken Long Go Branch Transit, station. so I've been to Long yeah. Branch or Long Branch, Long station. Branch Transit station. Yeah, so there's like a set of condos, and you can actually see like in the background just a few things that are that still make sense. Like there's a an apartment building that's still there. It's... The next episode on the list is actually, I think, a good pick. The cover-up. The one where... That's a heavy episode. It is such a heavy episode. <laughs> I think, I don't... I, that was my starter. That was my first find in, uh, in the show. That was the first thing I ever really recognized was um, Rick's apartment. Ah, uh, yeah. The entryway to Rick's apartment, because I used to live on Carlaw, uh, just south of Dundas, uh, in what I believe was a toy factory. I lived there with a few people. We had it as a studio. Um, So I walked past it a lot. It's right next to a restaurant called Celine Garden. (laughs) Um, Yeah, it's it's just this strange little entryway. And that's the only reason I remembered it, was this strange little entryway that they walked through. And every time I've been past it, I've always looked at it. When I lived there, I looked at it. And it's such a weird little entryway. And then I remember seeing it in the show and going, I know exactly where that is. I used to live down the street. And I thought that was an amazing thing. That and is this crazy. is what kind that, of like... That, that it would jump out to you when you lived there. You're like, huh. Oh, oh. Yeah, well, it was so... It's such a odd looking... Because I... It's, it's upstairs, perfect for where it's, it's perfect for where Rick lives. Like I can, yeah, I can remember that shot too with Joey pulling up and the skateboard. And thinking, where are we? <laughs> I'm a little bit out of my element. And then they go to Joey's house, which Joey's house was my my silver tuna. That was like the the hardest thing for me to find on that show. I actually spent, I think, man, how long have I been doing this project? I think I spent a full year trying to find Joey's house. Just putting, going back to it, picking it up when you could. Just, yeah, I mean, you go in and out, you mm-hmm. move on, you look for other stuff, but Joey's house is constantly... <laughs> 
hiding in the background. The white it, whale. It, exactly. <laughs> it was it was my white whale. And it was forever on my mind until one day I just thought about it differently. Mm. I'd been, because you know, the way my mind works is I'll think about, you know, I'm looking at the street and I'm thinking of the street as facing north. But then I just suddenly thought of it as, as you know, what if the camera's facing west? And something just clicked as soon as I thought it. And I realized two things in the background that were plausible, like a larger kind of warehouse looking building. And um, just another house. And I thought it was strange that they had this industrial building and this house in the same place. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, there's a lot of places in Toronto that are like that, but not really like like this not as close together as this so i started thinking about it and and i just i honestly when i thought about it as facing west i just went to google maps grabbed my little man and dropped him right in front of joey's house that is crazy <laughs> i dropped him right there and i looked like... straight at this shot and thought this is it <laughs> this is the sequence when they're riding up towards joey's house this is the shot so then I just turned to the left, and there's the house. That's and I've been searching for a year. <laughs> I mean, and you can get a great reference shot, I'm sure, from when the social worker leaves. There's a bunch of clues in that one. There's that... actually very, very little. Oh. I mean, you can only see. Well, like... I mean, once you have it, though, to, oh, to be yeah. sure. Once you, yeah, once you can. Yeah, once you can look at the house, hasn't actually changed very much. <laughs> I mean, it used to have a, a god awful coat of paint on it that they've taken off. Um, so it's actually a, a you know, it's a nice looking house. What's across the street has changed, um, but there's a few little giveaways. It's on on the site. I write about all of this. I yeah, write about course, all the little things that are like, there's that's, this gap in between the houses, and there's this alley, and it drives me nuts. Like that's a great part about this? your site is hearing your you know reading yeah. your thoughts on it and your take of how you got it. And that's well. me like just trying to prove that I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> Here's all the problems with this. Talking so. about heavy episodes, the next two on the list. Very heavy. Uh, can't live with them, which is a terrible name for this two-parter. Where Wheels' parents are killed by drunk drivers. That's that's I mean, an awful episode. That's really hard. It's actually that's actually been like a really hard um, part of my site was posting that. Uh, I lost my dad oh, in October, oh. and uh, when I posted that episode when i posted wheels's uh parents grave that was when my dad first went in the hospital oh, i'm sorry and like uh, thank you um so that was it was weird that that came up at the same time it was a really strange coincidence um so yeah um that, that's a heavy episode on a lot of levels because you watch wheels lose his parents at a really like impossible time to lose your parents mm -hmm. like i don't I don't know anybody, I think, who, who lost their parents that early, but I can't imagine what that would be like. I had one friend in, in high school whose, whose father had died when he was pretty young, four or five years old, and then okay. I, I knew him in grade two, so we kind of, that, that's the closest it came. That is, is very, like, the only reference I think a lot of people had would have been in this show Degrassi kind of yeah. like, because so many people saw it and there was it was I it was oh, the way they handled the issue is like it's bare bones everything's very raw in it <laughs> yeah with wheels like it I'm, is I haven't watched those episodes in a long time it's really heavy and I mean the, the reason I put it on the list isn't, isn't so much because it's so heavy I, I actually put it on there because I'm essentially bragging about the fact that I figured out where their gravesite is. <laughs> that was it. Like, yeah. That was the reason for me loving it, despite the fact that it is insanely heavy, is, is finding their grave is such a big deal for me. Mm -hmm. The day that I pinpointed it, I like jumped out of my chair. I was like, I have it. I have the exact spot. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, you can't like, you can't street view a, a cemetery. <laughs> they just don't go in with a camera and map that for you. So you have to show up and yeah, walk something, around. That would, that there's something very I don't know, morbid about if they ha if they did do that. There's something really strange about it. You can go to the Arctic Circle, but you can't. You can't go to a cemetery. <laughs> you can't go to a cemetery. But I mean, that's probably for the best. Yeah, they don't want people to digitally pay their respects. No. So, I mean, going there and finding it and using just the reference points of the show was great. 
I mean, just to find it. So heavy, heavy, heavy episode though. But right, I listed them both though, right? Did I list yeah, parts one, yeah, and, one two? and two? Yeah. Yeah. There's a couple of two parters where you just can't separate them because they're very, very important. Like while his parents being, you know, buried is, you know, part two. Yeah. Part one is the full lead up for that. Like just watching him, his character change. I mean, we set the tone for wheels in that episode, really. I mean, oh, where for he starts wheels moving forward. Yeah, he yeah. goes on a diff because wheels. Well, I a... mean, he starts blaming the whole world for his problems mm -hmm. instead of actually just looking at himself and going, maybe I just need to think about who I am. I don't think he ever really dealt with what happened. I don't think so either. I so. think there's like he he got into arguments with Snake. I think later in High about that, where he's like, you can't yeah. keep blaming, you know, because yeah. we're, we're, we're wheels. My was parents were killed, around, man. You know? My parents were killed. Because he wasn't. Parents are dead. I said it all the time. <laughs> he wasn't getting along with his like grandmother. I remember. So he was moving yeah. around and he's like, like can't taking stay off to meet his meet his, you know, father, his his biological father, Mike, mm -hmm. who's you know. You know what? That's those are the those are two episodes that I can't believe aren't on the list. Taking actually. off. Yeah, those the episode yeah. taken off or taken off is such a dad. big big episode. That Port is an Hope. episode everyone remembers. Like Port the... Hope was like my go to joke for a long time. Was like <laughs> I'm out of here. I'm going to Port Hope to meet my dad. <laughs> and like that was my like exit joke for parties. It was me <laughs> leaving and making that joke when I was in high school. I loved that he runs away and goes to Port Hope, and I'm. You know, my my greatest disappointment is that, that I was only doing a top 10 because I have like 20 episodes that I love, mm -hmm. but I couldn't separate these parts one and two things. I don't know why, actually. I mean, you could have, I, I also guess. did this, like I did this list in a hurry uh, to meet a deadline as I was preparing to go to San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Like I was preparing to go on vacation mm -hmm. and like do business in San Francisco. So it was a split trip and I had to, what did I have to? I hadn't booked a flight yet. I hadn't hey, booked a place hey, to stay. Hey, you don't have to. The, I'm just don't... like, I gotta do a top ten list of Degrassi now. Oh my god! I'm not like, trying to. It's an excellent list. I'm just, <laughs> and it's from your perspective. I'm just saying. I just like. I, I just wish think that I had more space. To if do. you had more, I just think that uh, I'm not trying to take away. From, it's you're a not great the first. List. You're not the first one. I got called out. Uh, I just Amanda wanted... Stepto called me out too. Oh right. I posted on my Facebook that I had been outing myself as a nerd on blog to and uh a comment showed up i got a notification it was like amanda steptoe commented on your status and i was like oh wow i don't think she's really said that many words to me since we've been friends on facebook and it was there's not a single spike episode in this list you're dead to me that's not true because trust me i'm pretty sure it's the one where she gets kicked out of school secondary <laughs> it's really not a spike episode <laughs> And it's funny because... It's late. That would be the it's, episode it's that late. you would well, have. Didn't they win an Emmy for it? <laughs> yeah, they won an Emmy for it. <laughs> I left it out. I left out the Emmy. I think Emmys can... Awards in general are, are meaningless. It's a and pretty great episode. The show though. is great on the whole. It's a great episode. Yeah. But I mean, the whole show exists to support one episode is ridiculous. Do we, okay, this episode was a great mention, though. Like, this, no list could go without bad blood. That's... You can't skip bad blood. It's a crazy thing that they brought up. I mean, consider the year. 91. Consider um, the concept of AIDS at that time was really becoming uh, at the forefront of what we talked about. I mean, I'm... we'd been, you know, pretending it wasn't a big deal for years. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, just Reagan himself pretended like it wasn't happening in the United States. And that's craziness. There, this was an epidemic. Mm -hmm. and we weren't doing anything about it, and and then there's there's also the 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 way it got portrayed when we did start talking about it as it being this exclusively gay thing. So for that show to bring it up in a hetero relationship was a really big deal. It's not something that was going to happen on Saved by the Bell. No, God, nothing happened on Saved by the Bell. <laughs> What happened? Jesse took speed. <laughs> Not even <laughs> caffeine pills. Oh man, weak. <laughs> it's so weak. I'm so not excited about that. And, and yeah, that's a Saved by the Bell joke for everybody who's <laughs> paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> and a great one. <laughs> I gotta say. Uh, 
Yeah, that uh, Bad Blood's a great episode. That's uh, <laughs> that's definitely <laughs> Bad Blood is an incredible, incredible episode because I mean it it brings back this whole thing that's been boiling in the background for years of the fact that Dwayne and Joey hate each other mm-hmm. for no real reason other than the fact that Dwayne's a dick and so's Joey in his yeah, own Joey, way. Yeah, Joey They're also a dick. Both dicks, mm-hmm. and they've just. They've needed to fight for a long time. They, it, they haven't fought. They fought once. They, they needed to once. refight. It now. wasn't great. It was gonna happen again. It was all a matter. To of be time. fair, Joey hadn't gone through puberty yet. You no, know, he got that no. growth spurt, and he took. <laughs> he had a way better shot now too. <laughs> growth spurt. No growth. Like it was it's really <laughs> funny to talk about a Pat Mastriani growth spurt because he's a, <laughs> kind of a short guy. I'm sorry, Pat, but you won't return any of my tweets, and you deserve that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, and the last one on the list, again, I'm going to say maybe my, uh, I, I wouldn't include it on a top 10, Best Laid Plans. Best Laid Plans is my personal favorite episode of oh, the entire series. It does have a great scene of uh, wheels buying the condoms. Wheels buying condoms uh, is an amazing sequence when he buys them off of Stephanie's mom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's outstanding. So they're, my reasoning for loving that episode is uh, the number of shoot locations, the difficulty of finding those shoot locations um, that went into it, and the fact that once I found them, I realized that I literally lived down the street from Wheels' house. <laughs> like, just around the corner from Wheels' house. And Wheels is an amazing character. His house is impossible to find. By using maps, you have to actually walk right to this house and go, this is it. This is the place. This is amazing. Um, I I searched for it for a very long time. There's a lot of stuff that happens in that episode that I really love. Like um, going to buy the condoms, finding that pharmacy, which everybody always thinks is, oh, that's the pharmacy at uh, Carla and Queen. That's the that's the shoppers drug mart, which they do use. They use it several times in the series, um, but it's not. It's actually it's an Indian restaurant now, mm-hmm. um, but it was a pharmacy back in the eighties, and it's out in Etobicoke. Hmm. It's it's on the the lakeshore. Oh, that's interesting. It's uh... <laughs> well, my girlfriend would like to know about that one because she thought it was the it's... the Carlon Queen one. No, they they did several things at, at that shoppers drug mart, mm-hmm. but that place is. Way, way down at, um, I can't remember if it's close to Islington or not. It's on the, it's on the, it's on the site. Yeah. Um, but riding my bike out to that place. Um, oh, when Joey buys the condoms, is that at the Carlon? Joey buys condoms at that one. Yeah. yeah for, for his date with Liz. Which is also a hilarious condom. That's a scene. hysterical condom buying the, sequence. And I'm that's actually, brilliant. I'm pretty and sure. And that's where Spike bought her pregnancy test uh, as well. I'm pretty sure that the the cashier that has to go ch- do the price check, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that's the security guard that Lucy and Vula get busted by. Uh, entirely possible. Yeah. I was, um, <laughs> there's a... Actually, I've learned since, since starting my site, I've been contacted by a number of people who all, you know, a lot of people have opinions about where things are on the show, which I do get contacted <laughs> about people's inklings about why i'm wrong that happens a few <laughs> times and I, I feel like i've provided enough information i'm i'm seriously right i wouldn't publish it if i didn't think i was being accurate but uh i've been contacted by a number of people who worked on the show um people who just you know were, were you know pas on the show people who just you know oh i was a boom mic operator but you know I also acted in a couple of episodes because they would just use whoever was on hand. So um, that's entirely possible. It's yeah. entirely possible that they cycled through a few adults and, you know, they're background-y kind of characters uh-huh. so you didn't really notice. Like the two cops who bust uh, Joey's Snake and Wheels when they're drinking uh, on their way to Lucy's party in season three, mm-hmm. which I haven't published yet. But uh, I got contacted by one of the cops. Oh. the the woman the female cop um she wrote me an email and said you know i was one of the cops she actually is married to the other cop <laughs> <laughs> they worked on the show together they were like pas they were production assistants on the show and 
they were they just got them dressed up as cops and made them do that scene. Party's <laughs> over, boys. The greatest line on that show. <laughs> Party's over, boys. Um, so yeah, entirely possible. But that episode, like, Wheels' house is very close to my house. And it's such a weird apartment. Like, it really speaks to what it's like to live in Toronto. Because a lot of us are living in apartments that are, you know, just a sectioned off piece of a larger house which is yeah, what this yeah. apartment is is a sectioned off piece of a larger house Did you say it was in parkdale it's in parkdale yeah because that, that's exactly what i lived in parkdale right one yep. house that was now into a, um, a semi-attached a lot now. of yeah. a lot of parkdale is like that because and, parkdale used to be like one of the richest neighborhoods in the city so it's all these sprawling mansions mm-hmm. and then that neighborhood just went bust yeah and they built the the gardener they shut out shut down the beach like for easy access and people stop going there yeah. and well, so everybody moved out something in parkdale where it's the the only part of the city where there's more renters than homeowners i believe living there that's probably true i think it was that was like the there's the more people moving it. in i know mm-hmm. i've noticed that the neighborhood's been changing i've been living in parkdale for like eight years now and yeah. uh it's it's changing rapidly well, there's I, a shopper's drug mart in parkdale now. yeah <laughs> i know i know <laughs> there's a starbucks at dufferin and king oh that's so weird <laughs> at dufferin and king eh? yeah where the coffee time used to be there's uh, no starbucks I it. so yeah. i mean that's that's a big change it's gentrifying I mean, there's a couple there was also another bylaw where there's they limited the number of bars on queen street i believe like they couldn't add anymore and that's why they started adding them on king like um mm. just at the end of that strip on the north side there was a bar <laughs> yeah uh it's a, a really dumpy bar. There was like a King bunch of... And Dufferin. But then just the next block down at the end of it, there's kind of like a nice bar. I forget the name of it, though. I can't think of it. Yeah, it's kind of new. There's, so there's, there's a, a few, few nice places. So there's a few episodes. These are some episodes that I, I found pretty memorable. Um, well, Showtime, part, I guess part one and two, you could include... talk about Claude? Yeah. <sighs> the Claude suit, that's an, that's an episode when you start talking about Degrassi. That's one that people remember for sure. I've been, it's wrong, but I really wanted to make like a board game version of Degrassi (laughs) that revolves around Clue, but it doesn't work because it's always Claude in the lavatory with the handgun. (laughs) I'm sorry. That's a terrible, terrible joke. It's a pretty good joke, actually. (laughs) There's somebody out there who's offended by suicide right now. And I mean, as you should be, I mean, it sucks. People they're they're offended sucks, about but fictional suicide. Fictional suicide, suicide, really. But it's always it, it's always clothed in the lavatory with the handgun, <laughs> and Snake's reaction is always hilarious. Ah, there's so there's so much blood. Really, the thing that solidified him staying on the show into his forties. Hey, hey, Snake was affected by that moment. Okay. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> he was out fixing his bike on his back porch the day after. Just, just you know, putting the patch on my tire. Yeah. That was pretty good. Whatever snake, I've <laughs> never like seen you ride a bike on this show ever. <laughs> <laughs> wheels is wheels is uh, not wheels. Rick's bike is like the haunted bike of Degrassi. Because he just disappears on it. Well, I guess Vula Rick, took a ride. Rick, Rick disappears from the show without men- after, without mention. After, no, he <laughs> just gone, just like that. Because I think um, Stephanie K. They're like, oh, she went. Yeah, blah, blah, they, blah. they said she was going to private school or something like Mm -hmm. that she was going to a different school and vula her parents pulled her out of school because of being a shoplifter and having terrible friends um but rick just disappears and uh, the story with that is that that he quit acting like he just didn't want to be an actor anymore at like age 13 he figured out he didn't want to do it he also like is pretty much the same height (laughs) now Mm -hmm. and he's a tattoo artist in san diego oh so that's what he does. He's actually pretty good. Nice. Um, but his bike, his very noticeable bike, which had that really funny little wheel at the front and a really long front fork, yes. banana seat, weird looking bike. It's a sick bike. Keeps showing up in the bike racks all through season three. Oh, really? Because it's a prop bike. Yeah. They just kept putting it there, but it was Rick's bike. They made very specific reference to it <laughs> in season one so you knew it as rick's bike he was always riding it and it kept showing up through season three it drives me nuts here's here's another good two-parter as well the new start the debut of degrassi high when wow. erica decides to have an abortion erica farrell murders babies yeah um that's okay Those that's, are... a, that's a big 
episode. Yeah. And it's a definitely a point of like contention for people who've read my list and are like, what is your fucking problem? You know what's interesting about that one too? That Liz is the student who's so anti-abortion. Because like thinking of what I... It's she, a really... She seems like she would be more progressive and be like, women have a... But... She does seem like she'd be more progressive. But I mean... It's in her whole backstory that that Liz is um, Liz is from a very broken home. Wasn't there like a push from like her father against her mother to have an abortion before Liz? Yeah, was born? that's the. And then I mean, story. her best friend is Spike, and Spike's had a baby at this point. And it just Liz gets super, you know. When Liz political. is first on the show and she meets Spike, she's like, "I never want to have a baby." Yeah. <laughs> that was like she's kind of an asshole the first couple episodes and that's what but... she said to spike who's 14 and pregnant she's actually another character you know that's been hiding in the show throughout all of season one i did make mention she's... yeah you can see her she just my thought on it was that they were just like no nah, that girl is now nah, she just background and she got that haircut got that haircut she got They're that like, oh, chelsea oh, cut and that brought it right back oh well, we're cooking with fire now we got a oh, we got a story some... here <laughs> <laughs> I honestly like there are some shots of of Liz and Spike together where I'm like this is it this is the entire Canadian punk rock scene right here. You know what's another interesting episode too? Uh, he ain't heavy. The one where Snake's older Snake's brother older is older gay. Brother is gay. Which is a pretty early because that would have been eighty nine. That's like yeah, that was a that's, that's a, a pretty a progressive episode. Really progressive episode. Um, I didn't list that episode because. I really don't like certain words that we use to uh, make people feel bad about about being gay, and they get used in that episode. I wouldn't. I, yeah, I. I, I mean, I haven't watched that one just, in a long time, so I'm. But I, I mean, it was the '80s, and we were still throwing words like that around pretty freely because they weren't necessarily bad words. I, I also believe that words, you know, words are words Who cares i mean you Doesn't could matter. you could but talk like, you could throw the rumor has it episode up with this one too which is another one that has a lot of a lot of weird language yeah as well. there's a lot of strange what do they say lezzy she's yeah. a lezzy too <laughs> such a weird that's where kathleen really outs herself as an asshole is yeah. like she's such an asshole she's a really nice person in real life <laughs> but such an asshole on the show i mean she i mean she's a pretty gr- I don't want to say great. She makes you hate. Like, that's the character she's playing, too, is supposed to be an annoying character. Oh, yeah, yeah. Totally. She's, well, she's super uptight. And from the most ridiculous background ever. Like, oh, her, her fa- alcoholic mother and absent father are the weirdest thing. It is so weird. Like, when we watch that episode, we're like, wait, so she's covering for her mom about being drunk to her dad? Like, it doesn't really make sense. Is his dad. Yeah, cause she's I'd be away. bulimic, too. She, yeah, that's the other thing. She's bulimic. She is abused by her boyfriend. Yeah. Like she has such a harsh. Story she has life. a terrible run. And that actually she lives brings... in a really nice house in a nice neighborhood, though. <laughs> and that brings me that that's actually one of my favorite episodes, the all nighter, where they end where up they smoke, smoke pot. They smoke pot, and the guys that was are playing on my pot. list. I like that episode a lot, actually. That was on my list. That was a uh, cut for. Um, I forget which one I took out. There's just something that's like just Put a real rather. like that episode could be like a whole movie almost like you know like that, the story of like two different yeah groups that of kids two, like hanging two all nighters going on yeah. where it turns out Arthur's amazing at poker and it turns out that Melanie is kind of an asshole when she's high that was so funny <laughs> <laughs> uh, Melanie's such a great character I could go on about her she's so weird you know she's such a weird character you know what's weird about that um. I can't remember the name of the match game, the quiz show episode. Oh, uh, the quiz show episode, the one where they're on. Yeah, well, this episode, that's where they're dealing with um, Kathleen's mom being an alcoholic. Yeah. Melanie is, like, not in that episode at all. Like, that would be the person who would help Kathleen. Yeah, think Quest for the Best. Quest for the Best, yeah. Quest for the Best. And isn't that weird that Melanie's not in that episode at all? It's really strange that Melanie's not in that episode. She's so oddly absent. Her best friend. Yeah. <laughs> it's really strange that she's not there. It was like, Rick, Rick will pick up the slack on this one. He totally did, too. Rick turned out to be a great guy. Gave her that sweater and all. Well, I think that was pretty much all the episodes I wanted to go through. That I'm, was it? I think that was all of them. And <clears throat> I was glad to talk to you about about um, your site and everything. I'm happy to be here. So, the, so it was the Degrassi Panther site. 
uh, DegrassiPanthers.com. You also are on Twitter at Degrassi Panthers, I believe. I think so, yeah. DJH Panthers. DJ I put H it in Panthers. as DJH Panthers because initially I didn't have uh, Degrassi Panthers mm-hmm. down. I was, I was just going to use DJH Panthers because I started it on Tumblr mm-hmm. and DegrassiPanthers.tumblr was mm-hmm. already taken. So I took DJH Panthers and then I made it my Twitter and then I got the dot com. Mm-hmm. It was like, uh, Whatever. So DJH Panthers, yeah. And also you're on Twitter at Brian Donnelly. Yeah, right? uh, with three Bs. B-B-B-R-I-A-N-D-O-N-N-E-L-L-Y. And I'll have all that stuff in the info as yeah, well. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm kind of everywhere right now. The Twitter, Twitter sphere is a weird place to talk about Degrassi. <laughs> yeah. I'm learning that, that you know, it's I a- mean, I'm still kind of Twitter new. I'm not really good at Twitter. I'm kind of lousy at it. I just really have gotten into posting random things that i think are funny about the show right now because this is off season for me yeah that's what i like about it i think just like the the degrassi circle on twitter is sort of that kind of the fun side of you can have this totally secondary conversation where you know you can make fun of aspects of the show but i've taken to kind of making up memes for the show but without actually making memes i just (laughs) take still shots and i I posted i think the last thing i posted was a picture of (laughs) Dwayne and his angry like I've, I'm not even listening to you, Jeremiah face. <laughs> and it was just like, in response to, because I'll occasionally just uh, search the words Degrassi Junior High and see what people are talking about. Mm-hmm. And uh, a lot of people badmouth it. Like a lot of people speak ill of that show. And sometimes it makes me mad because I'm thinking, have you even really like thought about what this show means? Like I understand that you're young and, and it's, fun to just call things shitty because they're you know cheese ball and cheap but i mean you're making this show on like almost no budget and it still manages to be totally groundbreaking and and to you know pull apart something that that we haven't even thought about in a social way yet you know you know like teenage pregnancy is a big deal and they talked about it on this show. Like exactly. It was the like, only teenage show that was really dealing with like a, a kid that, that young. I think that episode is still actually banned in the UK. I think they still don't run that episode. It's like Hannah Montana dealing with pregnancy or, yeah. uh, I don't know, whatever the modern equivalent sure. of that is. whatever show. the equivalent <laughs> is, yeah. I have no idea. Um, but yeah, so, so you know, I, I post memes on Twitter. <laughs> it's just, without them even being memes, they make some funny faces on that show. Because these aren't... They, they weren't using trained actors. They were using regular people. It would be like me or you just being grabbed by somebody and being like, hey, we're going to put you on TV. <laughs> okay. Like, sure, I guess. And I mean, I'm a pretty average looking dude. There's nothing particularly outstandingly great about me, looks wise, that make you go, that guy should be on TV. I'm actually the antithesis of that. <laughs> Probably shouldn't be on TV. Probably shouldn't even be on the radio. <laughs> but uh, yeah. They, that's what they did. These are the characters they used. They were just like everybody else. You could walk outside and find any of those kids. And it, it's funny because you can still see that, like, about yeah, the show. It, it still natural, looks like that. Realistic about it. it and wasn't... it's funny because what we were talking about with, with Canadian celebrities <laughs> is that you can still, you can pretty much still go outside and run into almost anybody who was on that show. A lot of them still live in Toronto. I know that, uh, uh, what's her name? Anais Gronowski. Uh, she played Lucy. She um, she works with the AGO, mm-hmm. um, and then uh, Arlene Lott. She she works on Suits, and they're all over the place. Yeah. Dwayne Dwayne worked for the CBC for a long time. <laughs> I can't remember Dwayne's real name now. Anyway, they're all still out there. I run into Kathy Keenan, who played Liz. I I see her probably once a month. <laughs> Like, if I'm out in the East End, I spot her every time. Because she's just a person. Yeah. She's just walking around living her life. And that's who they had on the show, were these people. And and that's kind of what's great about the show. I think that's what I still love about the show, is that it's, you know, it, these are kids that I probably went to school with. You know what I mean? Like, it feels like they're friends of yours, almost. Which makes me really depressed that I've realized that I'm <laughs> Arthur now. I'm the Arthur of my friends. I've heard Arthur really rejects the uh, the past of his yeah. show. There was a, a thing with an MTV host who, uh, <laughs> she found him out. I can't remember her name, but she found him out. He was working at a head shop on right. Young Street. That's and what she I... went and uh, 
forced him out the door and he came out and it's him <laughs> he's a beast though he's a monster he looks like a football player oh jeez yeah he was Crazy. a big, big boy big boy yeah, yeah. he's it a is. beast and now he's like he shaves his head down to the wood and had this like perfect like little too long goatee mm-hmm. and you're just like that dude just looks mean <laughs> <laughs> looks like a bouncer i've so, probably seen him and didn't even realize it it's entirely possible that that that's happened as well i'm almost positive that i've the very first a uh, person from the show that I ever saw was Anais Gronofsky, um, at a at an art opening. Actually, mm-hmm. I just saw her and I was like, "Holy shit, that's Lucy!" <laughs> and that was when I was like first living in the city. I was like, "It's great living in Toronto." That was <laughs> Toronto. it. Toronto. Like, hey, and that that pretty much sold it. I stayed. <laughs> Well, this has been awesome, Brian. I'm going to keep up on the Degrassi Panthers. And thank you for coming over and uh, going back to Degrassi with Uh, me. My pleasure. Thanks a lot. All right. We'll see you next time. Bye.